Guess what? What? Really, really big news. What? Really, really, really big news. What's the really big news? Sailing Kate Louise has just got over a million views. Hello, I've come down to Bowman Head for a quick sail. Uh, it's Sunday, I'm just going to do an overnight Sunday, Monday. I've been away in England for like five or six weeks. And then uh, last week I was sailing the uh, divekin up at Pitwater for the Wooden Boat Festival. So I've only just got back from that. If you're interested, I'll post a link to the video below. It was a bit wet on the Sunday, but we had a fantastic sail back into Sydney Harbour getting in at sunset, coming through the heads, which was really beautiful. Anyway, haven't sailed Kate Louise for a while, so I've uh, been desperate to go for a bit of a sail. So I've come down here, it is a bit busy because it's Sunday. Um, it's meant to be about 11 knots today. Down here there's probably only five or six, but uh, we'll see how we go. It's just good to be back on the water. This is Waratah Bay. I came in here just to get out of the wind a bit, uh, so I could put a reef in. I thought I might as well stop for lunch. It's about 12 o'clock. The wind's definitely picked up, actually blowing straight down here, but I'm on a mooring, so I'm gonna go back down the creek and find somewhere to stay tonight. There is one bay I wanna stay in. I've never stayed there before. It should be out of the southerly, which is predicted tonight at about 11 o'clock. It's meant to be a 20 knot southerly. I don't want to be off the mooring for that. So uh, that's what I'm going to do, head back down that way after some lunch. In my last video, I was all excited about reducing the uh, length of the shaft of my other outboard, and it worked fine going out. Coming back in, it didn't. Uh, and I've been fiddling around with it before I went overseas, and I had another go yesterday. And it's, uh, it's not the batteries, it's not the controller, it's not the chip, it's uh, not the cable to the controller. So it's either the outboard or the cable going to the outboard, which uh, is a bit beyond me because I can't uh, get right to the bottom of it uh, to take it apart. I don't have the right tools, uh, German outboards. Uh, so I'll probably have to take it somewhere and see if they can fix it. Uh, because it does make a hell of a difference not having your outboard in. At the moment I've put the old one back in uh, and because I didn't have uh, the right size holes for the mount for it, I've had to lash it in place, which is fine, but I've got to fix that when I go back if I'm going to keep using this old one. Um, but hopefully I'll get the new one working, because it does make a lot of difference. So we're off sailing again after a nice little lunch stop over there at Waratah Bay. There's the uh, wreck of the old ship, the Waratah's still there. Or paddle steamer, I think it was. Anyway, I've put two roofs in, which is probably one too many, but it's easy enough to drop. It's a bit harder to put one in, so uh, just head up towards Cottage Point, see what the weather's like up there. The wind's definitely picked up. It's not too bad, though. Um, not a cloud in the sky. Fantastic. So 
somebody who watches the channel just came over to say hello. He wrecks his boat's a bit big for dinghy cruising. I tend to agree, and not very trailable. Anyway, it's good to see someone on the water. Well, it's three o'clock and the wind's meant to be blowing right up until about 11 o'clock tonight. Looks like it's actually dropping a bit. I'm just trying to get up here to Cottage Point and I'll turn around and go back and find a mooring. Uh, but it's been a nice little sail. Uh, there are a few bullets that come through here, so one minute you've got nothing and the next minute you're trying to stay upright. But um, apart from that, it's uh, all good fun. In fact, that's quite good fun as well. But I haven't got wet this time. Well, here comes another one. But I'm, I'm just in the Bermuda Triangle of where I've nearly gone over twice, which is just around here. Uh, to get wind coming from all three directions, um, which is a bit weird, but that's what happens. around here so I decided to turn around and head for home. Hopefully we'll have a run all the way back. It was meant to switch around to the south at some stage. I did tack all the way up here. I don't really want to tack all the way back. It might rain and I did leave my waterproof at home so um, yes I did forget something. Oh, there's a giant. Um, hopefully it won't rain. Here comes a plane into land. a lively run back which is good I'm gonna get back in no time uh, yeah I don't know probably five knots running very good everyone seems to be going home jet skis are so noisy they really are noisy or am I just getting old I think it's called foil surfing. You've got a pretty good balance. So I'm set up for the night. It's only about 5.30. Uh, I'm still getting my head around daylight saving because having just come back from England, uh, it's weird to have uh, light so late. I don't think it gets dark now till about seven o'clock or so. Anyway, I've put the uh, canvas hatch cover at the ready. No rain is predicted but it's looking a bit iffy and if there's going to be uh, 20 knot winds tonight I'm not going to bother putting the tarp up because it will just flap all night long. So uh, I'm in this nice little spot fairly protected here south south way so I should be uh, fairly protected. Uh, it's been a good day it's pretty hot it's probably about 29 all day uh, did an awful lot of tacking all the way up, but um, it's all practice. And then uh, I've come back down here, I'm not too far from the ramp, so I might go for another sail tomorrow before heading back, depending on what the wind's going to be like. It's going to be a lot stronger tomorrow. But uh, just good to be back on Cape Louise and on the water. 
And speaking of England, I was lucky enough while I was over there to uh, catch up with Mark, who, as young boys, uh, we used to sail together with our fathers um, about 60 years ago. And uh, he took us for a look around French and Ponds, where I learned to sail. Have a look at this. This is where it all started, at French and Ponds Sailing Club. Dinghy sailing in England is still very popular. We think these are single-handed disabled sailing boats, but we're not quite sure what they're called. Quite narrow. This is where our boat uh, lived. And that's the old starter's hut. And the starting line was across here to one of those boys, one of the red boys, I think. Mark, I was just reminiscing about what it was like sailing here when we were kids. Do you yeah. remember all that? I do, very clearly, yeah. It was usually cold and very wet. Yeah. And sometimes icy. And yeah. we didn't have wetsuits, we didn't have anything. We didn't even have jamming cleats. We used to have to hold on to the jib sheet. That's right. But we had fun, though, didn't we? We did have fun, yeah. Every yeah, Sunday. Great. Every Sunday. It didn't matter what the weather yeah. was. <laughs> if there was any other family event on... We were going yeah. sailing on Sunday. Winter and summer and Winter. no wetsuits. Yeah. And you've got to remember, this is England and it does get quite cold here. Well, sometimes the ice was so thick you could walk right across this pond. <laughs> we didn't go sailing then because we couldn't break it. But... <laughs> Tell me about the monks digging this lake because that well, is fascinating. Apparently, I believe the history is that there's Waverley Abbey, which is quite close by, and Farnham Castle. And the bishops of Winchester used to come between Winchester, which is about 25 miles to the south, up to Westminster, which is in London, which is about 35 miles to the north. And they would stop in Farnham, either at the Abbey or the castle, and they needed to supply fresh fish uh, because the relig their religion dictated they had to eat fish on Friday. So they dammed up the uh, the river at the outflow well, end and them. flooded this area. But I think they had to line, dig some of it out by hand and line it with clay to stop the water leaching out. Uh, but during the war, they drained it because it was the moon reflecting off the uh, surface of the water uh, was a good uh, guide point for them to line up on Aldershot and Farnborough. Farnborough was a, was a uh, quite an important airfield and Aldershot was the home of the British Army. So if they could drop bombs on those two places, this being full of water with the moonlight would have made it much easier for them. There we go, in a nutshell. It's what, as I remember being told it as an ankle biter. Yes, we spent many wet weekends together, sailing all over the place and in championships at the weekends and holidays, etc., etc. Um, but it was all good fun. And it hasn't really changed very much at all. And Mark's a bit of a whiz. He uh, makes custom-made drums as well as playing jazz drums. Absolutely amazing, the timber work, incredible. This last one was made for Steve Gadd, the US drummer with Paul Simon, Eric Clapton, James Taylor and Steely Dan. There's a few spots of rain. It's so peaceful here once all the boats have gone home. But I'm about to destroy that because did I tell you I was learning the concertina? I apologise in advance. I can't promise this will be any good, but I'll give it a go. This one's called uh, Mary in the Woods. I am learning. I am learning. Don't expect anything perfect, it won't be. And for all those musos out there that say I can't play, you're right, I can't play, I'm learning. This is an Anglo concertina with 30 buttons, and it's a diatonic, which means it plays a different note on each button, whether you push or you pull. So you've got to get your head around pushing and pulling, and fingers on the left-hand side or the right-hand side. 
it's not as straightforward as it seems, as you can probably tell. I've got to read the music because I can't memorise these yet, but I, I'm trying. Uh, this one's a hornpipe. Yeah, I know, God. It's a, uh, a traditional 1790 Ricketts hornpipe. I'll give it a go. I think it's much better to listen to the birds, don't you? I know I've said it before, but this is what I like about dinghy cruising. Running up rivers, you're by yourself, there's nobody here. They've all gone home and we've got the place to ourselves. Just you and the birds. And we're lucky in Sydney to have these places so nearby. It's all National Park. The moorings are free. Hmm, not bad. So I think it's time for dinner. I'm gonna have, and yes, I've had it before, pasta sensations with aged cheddar and parmesan with chives. And I'm going to add some spinach, tomatoes, and some peas. And as Len knows, peas maketh the man. When you come to places like this, it really is magical. Dinghy cruising with a group of people around a campfire is always fun and we have a lot of laughs. But it's also nice to go away by yourself sometimes and just enjoy the tranquility. <laughs> I've had a couple of people ask me about my galley box. Well, I have done a video in the past and I'll put the link below, uh, but basically I got the idea and some of the measurements from Arwen's meanderings with Steve and Roger Barnes. They both have galley boxes. You've got to adjust them to make them fit where you want them. Mine had to fit under the thwart, so it had to be a particular size, uh, but it's lined with uh, fireproof aluminium, which is good. And I use, unlike a Trangia, which is slightly bigger, I use a gas bottle, uh, a vertical gas bottle, as opposed to a canister. Um, I could change it to a, a Trangia, it would just about fit, but I'm quite happy with the gas that I've got, uh, and they seem to last forever. So, uh, yeah, there you go. Not too bad. Could probably have added some cream, but um, yeah. Mm. It's really hot. Mm. But you're right, Len. Peas absolutely make it. Mm. It's very good. People say, why do you always say it's very good? Well, it is very good. I just put the coffee on, it's starting to drizzle. Ah. It's about nine o'clock. I didn't realise the time, I was just lying in bed listening to the lyrebirds. There's quite a few lyrebirds around here. And they make uh, really interesting calls. Well, they've stopped now because it started raining. Unfortunately. Hopefully it's only a drizzle. There's still quite a bit of wind. Um, might go for a little sail if the rain stops, or else I'll just head back. I'm only probably half an hour away from the, the ramp. Last night was pretty good, so quiet, absolutely quiet around here.
scrambled eggs on toast or a toasted roll. Not bad. Who needs a fancy restaurant when you've got this? going for a bit of a sail before I head back. It's magical, there's absolutely nobody around. It's fantastic. Actually, someone is trail biking somewhere in the, in the uh, National Park. I didn't know if you were allowed to do that, but anyway, I can hear someone far away on their two stroke. But this is fantastic. There's just no one around. It's about 12 o'clock now, it's a bit overcast, but uh, that's where I was last night, all by myself. Fantastic. This is great. Hmm. Maybe it was just a gust. It's proving to be a little bit of a tricky sail through here. The wind's very changeable and uh, the rocks are covered in oysters. Just went round the last marker, which is great, as the wind keeps dropping. Um, I think we're okay. Just coming up to the boat ramp now. I had to motor because it's just too changeable and gusty in here. One minute there's something and the next minute there's nothing. And it can swing 90 degrees easily. A bit different from yesterday. I think there's one person on the ramp. Normally this can get quite busy in summer. So I had a good sail yesterday, nice sunny weather. And today wasn't too bad, a bit fickle, but not too bad. Anyway, thank you for watching Sailing Kate Louise. And I promise you, I won't bore you with my concertina playing every time. I do realize people have sensitive ears. And as always, I'll see you on the water somewhere next time. <laughs>